Well, my mom listens to the show now. But don't worry, I promise that won't change an F asterisk asterisk asterisking thing. I'm getting. I'm getting. My parents made me listen to them fuck for years. The least I can do is make them listen to me say fuck. And incidentally, mom, if you're listening, get your fucking flu shot. I don't give a shit if the Googles agree with your intuition. Your gut feeling can't trump 83 years of sound science until you go to a doctor and the doctor says, hey, you shouldn't get a flu shot because you're immunocompromised. You get your fucking flu shot. <sighs> so, yeah. Hosted my folks for a couple of days last week, and by and large, we had a blast. We more or less avoided the topic of religion, and to the extent that it's possible this late into an election year, we avoided the topic of politics. I did have to give them the details of what exactly I do for a living, but lucky for me, the I make fun of Jesus' balls blow was softened by the fact that it happened just as you guys were donating 25000 bucks to charity to hear us make fun of those balls. So, all in all, great visit. In fact... I was worried I was going to get all the way through it without any good diatribe material at all. But apparently the topic came when I wasn't home. My dad and I were out playing around a golf while my mom was teaching Lucinda how to make a Dutch apple pie I would murder puppies for. And I guess they're talking about the show. Lucinda's kind of soft peddling the need for what we do. You know, the importance of atheist voices to counterbalance the religious ones. And apparently my mom throws out this gem at some point. She says something along the lines of, well, being a Christian is about one thing being good to other people. So in my mind, Noah has always been a Christian, and he still is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I love my mom. Of course I do. She's my mom. So normally I'd respond to something like this with a whole bunch of, you know, can you believe this bitch over here type stuff, but it's my mom, so I'm going to say this super, super nice. Mom, fuck that noise. Bull fucking shit. Not only is that definition so wrong, it renders the very term you're using worthless, but it's also loaded with rampant and unapologetic bigotry. I mean, if that's what Christian means to you, what does Muslim mean? What does Hindu mean? Because if it's not the same fucking thing, there's no way out of that corner you've painted yourself into without ducking into prejudice. Surely you wouldn't say of a Jew that was good to other people, well, he's really a Christian whether he knows it or not. Or at least if you would say that, warn me before I introduce you to any Jews. So, assuming my mom's not a raging bigot and doesn't think that only people from Christianized parts of the world have figured out being good to each other, what does she mean? What else could that mean? I mean, has she just given up with the association with God and salvation altogether and refiled that word at the end of the thesaurus entry for philanthropy? I mean, she goes to a church, so I'm sure she's noticed they bring up that Jesus guy an awful lot. She's a pretty bright lady, so I'm not buying that one. Now, you might say, well, you know, maybe she would redefine all those other religions the same way. Maybe she's just retreating into that, it doesn't matter what you have faith in as long as you have faith nonsense. And that might be possible for most people, but my mom also expressed an issue with devil worship, whatever the hell that means. So clearly having faith in Satan wouldn't fit the bill. And something tells me she's not the type of person to assign the same goodness value to Islam as Christianity. Now, to her credit, you don't need to be a bigot to get there, no matter what Sam Harris's detractors say. You can definitely get there through bigotry, but you can also get there through an objective assessment of their respective cultures. No, I think this is it. I think my mom was playing that game Christians like to play where they just define the term down to whatever's defensible in the moment. Right, It's like those assholes who pretend in a debate that all God means is the thing that started the Big Bang, as though it's a scientific placeholder akin to dark energy. You know, I've seen theologists take the stage acting like that's a realistic argument. It's not, of course, but even if it was, something tells me they don't restrict themselves to that definition on Sunday morning or any time they're not at a podium across from an atheist. You know, look, this is a super convenient strategy, of course, because no matter how wrong you always are, you're never wrong in the moment. You are to anybody who might be critically evaluating your statements, but you never have to be wrong to you. You stack enough true Scotsmen and ramparts on either side of your narrow little worldview, and you never have to worry about disconfirming evidence showing up in your peripheral vision. Christians are good people. Okay, but what about all these uh, kid rapists and the people that covered it up? Well, obviously, they're not really Christians. Okay, but what about all these atheist doctors that run into war zones to help refugees? Well, obviously, they are really Christians. Well, doesn't Christian mean person who accepts Jesus as their personal savior? Uh, only when I'm talking to people who won't disagree with me. See? See, works great. And the defense that these people offer is that all that they take from Christianity is the message to be nice to people. And that's fine. I mean, it's being applied retroactively, of course, since that's nowhere near the primary message of the New Testament. That book is mostly about setting your affairs in order quick before the world ends. If you were being honest with the title, the book would be called One, Two, Two and a Half. But whatever. If that's what you take from it, good. That's a good message. 
You know, but you can't examine something solely based on how it affects you. By that standard, the war in Syria is no big deal, and global terrorism is a smaller problem than the wide receiver depth of my fantasy team going into bye weeks. Because regardless of what Christianity means to you in this moment while you're trying to justify it, the word does have a meaning. You know, you can whitewash that book in your own head, but in the real world, it recommends sexism and child abuse. You can pick what you want from the Christianity buffet, but you can't ignore that the buffet also contains endorsements for slavery, justifications for infanticide, and recommendations for the best way to kill gay people. And and you can say it's a good book all you want, and the people who agreed to overlook 90% of the damn thing can wink along with you, but you're also lending power to the homophobe and the misogynist and the violent racist because that's what's actually in the book. And and, and when you tell the demographer that you're a non-denominational Christian, you may mean in your head that you're good to people, but what it shows your elected representative is that his or her district is loaded up with a group of people that generally oppose gay rights and progressive social policies. You're, You're lumping yourself in with a group of people who have used their political clout in this decade almost exclusively to oppose the rights of gay people, trans people, and women. Being good to people, my ass. So if Christianity means being good to people, why don't you drop the sectarian title and I'll meet you at the first church of altruism next Sunday. But if it means what all the dictionaries seem to think it means, have the guts to stand by that definition rather than molding it to whatever verbal parameters are easiest to defend in the moment. And have the guts to abandon that label as it comes to mean something you don't agree with. And above all, get your fucking flu shot.